Everybody, it's Ben Strader at EFI University, and we're in the shop today working on our engine project for the Competition Engine Development Program. And we're at the point where we normally would go through and do the degree process to our camshaft. But we thought maybe this would be an opportunity for a quick little tech video and talk about what the degreeing process actually means. And what it really means is when we put the camshaft in the engine, most times people just tighten up the bolts and line up the dots and go on about it. And that's fine for an OEM or a stockish engine with maybe a little bit more camshaft. When you start getting into a real competition or an actual racing engines where the tolerances are tighter and the room for error is a lot smaller, we can't just rely on that sloppy machining that may or may not have happened either on the camshaft, the gears, the chains, or the block itself. So by degreeing the camshaft, what we mean is we come in here and we look at the cam card that was supplied with the camshaft. And we check the events of when the intake and exhaust valves were supposed to open and close relative to our, time, our uh, timing wheel that we put here on the block. Now, the thing is, everything in here is predicated on what we call top dead center. So before we can ever get around to actually degreeing a camshaft, we have to locate and clearly identify what top dead center is for our engine. But it occurred to me that a lot of people may not actually truly understand the definition of top dead center. Ask yourself, when I think of top dead center, what do I usually assume? Well, most people would say it means that the piston's all the way at the top of its travel. And in fact, that is true, but it doesn't tell us the entire story. If you think the way, if you think about how a crankshaft and a connecting rod work together, our crankshaft is in here turning around in a circle and our connecting rod and pistons are moving up and down, but the connecting rod's actually pivoting at the same time. So what'll happen is, as the piston comes all the way to the top of the bore, the connecting rod will be at somewhat of an angle like this. And as the crankshaft continues the turn, it will have to pivot across the top before we start going back down in the cylinder. So because of that relationship, there's actually a period of time where the piston is sitting still all the way at the top of the bore, but the crankshaft is still moving. And so that means top dead center has to mean two things at the same time. One, the piston is in fact all the way at the top of its travel. And two, we've centered the connecting rod vertically up and down in the cylinder, or we would be at what we call zero degrees of crank travel. So the easiest way to have an extremely reliable result of where top dead center is, is to use a mechanical piston stop while we have the cylinder head off. So we've got one right here. Looks like this. It's just a slotted bar with a screw in it that I can adjust. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay it across the cylinder here with the piston down in the bore and I'm gonna screw it down tight. It doesn't have to be reefed on tight, just enough so that we have a physical stop for our piston. What I would then do is attach my timing wheel and timing gear here to the front of the engine. It, and we're just gonna sort of by eye locate it near top dead center because we wanna get it very precise by measurement. So we just kinda of need to be in the ballpark. So I've got my indicator here with an adjustable glass window and I have my timing wheel on the front of the block. We're ready to go. What you're gonna need is a little marker, which I can probably find right here. And I'm gonna take my chair and I'm gonna sit down where I can look closely and see my wheel. And as I begin to rotate the wheel around, I choose to use a wrench on the front of my wheel. There's enough leverage here that you could grab this and you can turn it, but what you'll find is if you try to do that a lot, eventually you can loosen the wheel in here and it won't be as tight. So I prefer to use my wrench. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. And I'm going to slowly come around. I can see my piston starting to come up there, but it won't be able to make it all the way to top dead center. It's going to stop there. So what I'm going to do is take and make a little mark here. And I'm going to call that 35. Now I'm going to go the other direction until it stops again. And we're getting close. It's coming up to the top there. And boom, would you look at that? There's another mark. And I got lucky because it's also 35 degrees. So now if you look at what I have on the wheel, I have a mark here, 35 before top dead center, and a mark here, 35 before top dead center. So that means that I can simply take my locked mechanical stop off of the engine. Obviously, I've done some work to set mine up before we did this video. But uh, what we're going to do is take the stop off. 
Now I'm just going to rotate the engine around until my indicator is exactly halfway between my two marks. So I'm going to come right up here and stop. Now, if the halfway point between the two marks that you just made isn't on zero, no problem. The engine physically is. You can simply loosen your uh, indicator here and adjust it so that it's on zero. But we are now exactly halfway between those two marks. So I could move this thing three or four degrees one way or the other, and my piston would still be at the top, but that would not be top dead center. Now that we have that set up, we can set up our dial indicator and go about the cam degreeing process.